right. Ta-da. Otherwise, we'd have silent movie.
Oh. 
reading is from Acts chapter 4. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, and has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing the 23rd Psalm.
For that miracle to reveal himself through the Son in the course of teaching of Jesus in essence. If you take this and boil it down, it takes two chapters, three legendary cycles, and two different seasons to reveal the total of what Jesus did in one line. In this teaching, both disciple and Pharisee about spiritual blindness, as through the example of a shepherd and a sheep. In John's Gospel, the book of signs, which record Jesus' miracles, each of these follows a revelation of the miracle. But each has their own miracle. Like running out of wine in the wedding. No food for 5,000 who have been listening to him in the wilderness. A man born blind. And Lazarus, dead and married. And of course, those miraculous solutions found in Jesus' wine and water. The 5,000 fed Lazarus raised in a man, a blind man, to see. As important as these are as signs of God and the Son of God, Jesus the Messiah is using each of each miracle, showing a purpose, providing teaching for him. See, in chapter 9, we hear that Jesus going along in Jerusalem, he saw a blind man, one who was blind from birth. Now, as birth defects go at that time, remember we're talking about 30 CD, they believed that the defect was caused by sin, the sin of the parents, or the sin of the person born. So the disciples asked Jesus, who fault was, who sinned? And you know how he responded, no one sinned. But he was born blind so that the work of God would be displayed in his life. That's important. He was ordained blind so that God could be revealed. Jesus delivers his famous I am, his I am, the light of the world, the light of the blind, the light into the world of darkness. And Jesus reveals something important that he came to heal the world of its blindness, its darkness, and sin and death. His being the light of the world, that light that guides the world out of eternal darkness into eternal light. But with the blind man, Jesus uses something simple. He uses a little dirt. With. <coughs> and makes him up. He covers the blind man's eyes and then sends him to wash in the pool of soap. Note that the man never asked Jesus to heal him. Jesus kind of knew what he needed to be whole. Like a good shepherd, Jesus knows his flock, and his flock know him. As the man stood there in front of Jesus, think about this. Just when the disciples had just asked who sinned, his parents or him, they say all of this probably within the earshot of this man. And now this Jesus, he doesn't know, spits on the ground and starts pouring mud and puts it across his eyes. What do you think across that blind man's eyes? This is another one that's just going to spit at me. Another wondering whether I'm a sinner, wondering if I'm not just too broken, less than condemned in this life, and the next unworthy of love, of hope, and of comfort. That's been a, not an unusual response, but no. The blind man knew that this was different. Now, he could not see Jesus, but he knew that there was love there. He knew it in his touch. He knew that the man touching him was more than just a man. He saw a healer, not with his blind eyes, but with a heart and a spirit that could see. He heard his voice and knew he knew he would be holy. How did he know this? Well, he's always known it. In the beginning of John's gospel, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God from the very beginning. Through him, all things. See, the blind man had already known, known his voice from the time of his formation in his mother's womb when the Word and Creator brought this one, this man, into being. Throughout the rest of the story, a man only knew his healer by his touch and his voice, yet he knew him. Even when the whole world, the Pharisees and the Jews opposed to Jesus, when they attacked both this blind man and his healer, the 
This man remains steadfast in his witness only because, though he can only identify him by his son, by his touch, he knew this man was from God. He knew the man was blessed. He knew that he could trust and love him because even in his sorriest condition, the man, Jesus, still loved and cared for him. Even after the world we live in cast him out, Jesus still loved him and provided him. What is interesting still after all that is that Jesus, after hearing the man had been condemned, kicked out of the temple. Jesus went looking for him, the lost one in the temple. The 99 were saved, and yet he went to look for the lost one. When Jesus finds him, he asks if he believe in the Son of Man, the one who saved him, the man replies, point him out to me so I can, so I can see him and so I may believe in Jesus. Thank you. 
we still are sheep. And as sheep, we listen for his call, his word, and his will in this way. We are called. Listen. Listen for his voice. Jesus is still talking. I wonder where he'll lead us today. Yeah. 
Phillips, Sherry and Dave Sterner, Greg Fisher, Alex. Thanks, you. 
you to remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks, gave the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all the bread, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. We are given assurance of the Lord's presence through the gift of His Holy Spirit. Now we bring to you the same bread of life, the same cup of blessing, that you may be strengthened through your participation in the body of Christ. Lord, remember your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Alleluia. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power. The Christ of unending joy and the spirit of Easter hope. Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and always. Amen. 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 Our sending hymn today, The Strife is Over the Battle One. It's number 366. Thank you.